Retirement age is a last century idea. Let me say that again. Re forget the idea of a retirement age. It's history. And people are already working far later in life. Even my grandmother did that, and she died 10 years ago. And society needs older people anyway. Society needs a mix and match where people are, feel able and are welcomed and encouraged, warmly encouraged, to work for as long as they would like to. Um, people opt in and out. Uh, with longer life expectancy, it means that someone can still look forward to three times as much years in retirement as they ever had before and still retire at the age of 70 because of that life expectancy issue. Most people didn't get any retirement in the olden days. They worked until they dropped. The idea of retirement is, an, is a late 20th century invention, really. By the way, people ask how, funded, how retirement will be funded, and they forget there's all kinds of interesting things. Firstly, that people will, in fact, be working in bits and pieces. And people say, well, how horrible, Patrick, how terrible that you're going to require people in your vision of the future to carry on working. They say, you try stopping my grandmother from working. We kept on saying to her, don't you think you ought to play some more bridge, play some more golf, and give up some of those medical? She said, listen, it's my life. How dare you tell me how to run my life? I only do it three days a week, but so what? I enjoy it, and the insurance company pays me well, which means they must value me to do it. So, uh, you know, we need to rethink everything we, we've ever thought about retirement. Um, and uh, not only will people be supplementing their income, and because they're healthy and well and fit and they want to do it, but also, uh, there's another issue. Four trillion dollars will move from one generation to another in America over the next ten years. From inheritance. We, will ne we have never in America seen so much money flow. And you know what? Those who inherit are retired. Why? In the olden days, you, you inherited at the age of 43 from mum and dad. Now, chances are, you're 78 and you're waiting for your second hip. And you're going in and doing the laundry for 98-year-old mum. And you're still paying the school fees of your 48-year-old going through his fifth education. <laughs> And you just inherit half a million dollars. You're 78 years old. So there's going to be some interesting things here. Lots of pensions are going to find themselves supplemented by inheritance. And the other thing, of course, is that many more people in America than has ever happened before own equity in their own homes, especially over the last few years. Um, and I know that share prices took a hammering, but the fact is that there is equity around. There's more of it than many economists have judged when thinking about policy and how people will survive. Now, 65% of all health spending is in the over 65s already. That's 470 billion a year in the United States of America. Listen, most diseases, most major diseases are age related. In fact, in fact, you could say that there's one common element in almost all diseases. Here is an interesting thought. Suppose I could find one, one mechanism. You remember I said that 85% of the genetic code in all organisms is the same, right? Well, 85 90% of all the processes in every one of your cells are the same, right? So if one of your brain cells is aging, it's probably the same reason why one of your kidney cells is aging. It's probably the reason why one of your skin cells is getting older and the reason why one of your, your hairs went gray. It's all related. There can't be that many mechanisms of aging. Common sense tells us that we might find one or two common pathways which could explain a way we could slow down not only the aging of a brain cell, but at the same time the wrinkling of the skin. Now that's exciting, isn't it? You see, we're talking about common mechanisms. Now let's go back to the slides again because, you see, um, if you decide that most diseases are diseases of aging, if you think about it, arteriosclerosis, it doesn't matter what disease, you, you pick an illness, and apart from infections, most diseases are diseases of degenerative processes, right? Most of the things that you're suffering from in this room right now are diseases of aging, and they almost certainly have a common basis. So we could find one biological key that could sort out 10 or 15 tables across this room. Now that's interesting. And it's a hugely neglected and incredibly controversial area for research, but it's one that AARP will have to get involved in. It's unavoidable. Aging itself has become a dominant unmet need. Gone are the days of saying, well, we're just getting old. You know, it's just getting old. Well, actually, if you start thinking about aging in a new way, you start thinking about two things. One, 
If it's worn out, fix it. If, it needs, if, it's, uh, if it's broke, regenerate it. Those are the kind of technologies I showed you before. Or two, slow down the aging process itself. Now, of course, you might say, yes, but Patrick, what's the point? See, in the old days, uh, you know, you had fun when you were 20 and then gradually the energy levels went and you're worrying that, in fact, all that happens as you elongate mortality, uh, as you elongate life, is that you just land up with years and years and years of chronic disability. So what we're talking about is using medicine to compress morbidity. You're pushing that graph to the right-hand side. So like your Duracell battery goes. So, see, my grandmother died at the age of 94. Tragically, it was her brain that went. But everything else was fine. If only we'd been able to keep all of her body parts going in sync together. So at the time when her brain was failing was a time when her heart was failing, a time when her kidneys are going, a time when her bones are going out, and you think, well, this is her time. But it's tragic when you've got someone who can still run a marathon at the age of 92 in her physical body, but her mind is gone. Now, just to get us thinking about a new kind of world, I'm not saying you're going to live till 160, but there are some very interesting things that we've discovered. We found a worm which, which lives five times as long if just a couple of genes are turned off. Five times as long. Uh, uh, there is a, a drug that's under trial, has been under trial in humans, in mice and rats. It makes their skin more elastic and removes all the stiffening of their arteries. That's an extraordinary thing. So the arteries become as elastic as an 18-year-old or a one-year-old mouse. And the tails spring back when they're stretched. Now, what would happen if we could find a drug that would restore your arteries to normal elasticity so you don't have to take blood pressure medication anymore? And when you look in the mirror and pull your skin, it goes whoop, like that. And we're not just talking about a face face lift, we're talking about a body lift. We're talking about every part, every centimeter of skin in your body becoming as elastic as a newborn baby. You're thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, we've done it in mice and rats. Astonishing things are happening. Okay, okay uh, carry on. Um, there's a twice daily treatment that's been tried in mice and rats uh, called metformin. It's a drug for, tr for diabetes that's been here for many, many years. It has very, very few side effects. We've used it for 30 years in medicine. If you give it to, to non diabetic mice and rats, they live for 20% longer and they have an 80% reduced risk of cancer. A whole lot of human beings on the West Coast have already started taking it themselves. They don't want to wait and find out if it works, by which time it'll be too late. We've discovered animals that are eternal. Some whales don't get old. Bowhead whales um, are come in two types. Some live for 200 years, some only live for 20. There's one gene probably that's different between them. There are two American teams right now in a race against time to find that particular gene which turns off the aging mechanism. If you don't get old, you still die but you have the same statistical risk of dying from an accident or a pneumonia or something like that every year, but you don't age. We know that turtles don't get old. We know that sturgeon fish don't get old, and we suspect it's the same gene. We also know that if you look at senior citizens, those who are over 100 years old, you find a gene uh, that is the same as that in long-lived yeast and worms, and you, find that, and you find that if that gene is expressed twice on both of the chromosomes, they are much more likely to live over 100 years old. So, Watch this space. We'll see a lot of this kind of stuff. We'll see a, we have seen a huge rise in life expectancy in the 20th century. It came mainly from reducing childhood mortality. If you save a child from dying, you add 80 years of average life. Okay? If you save an old person from dying for 10 years, from say 80 to 90, you only add 10 years. So you have to work much harder in the next century to get the same, same kind of improvement in life expectancy as you had in the last. If you eliminate all cancers, heart attacks, and strokes, and diabetes, you will only add another 10 to 12 years of life expectancy average. Death rates would need to fall in every decade by 85% in order to get an average life expectancy as high as 100 years. Now, so what I'm saying is, what's this space? Life expectancy will, inc will improve. It's going to go on improving more rapidly than the forecasts have traditionally implied. Which is, uh, we're going to find that other governments, like the Japanese government, will have to keep tearing up their forecasts. That will mean a redefinition of things like retirement, a redefinition of what middle age is, um, and it will have profound society implications. Now,